Hello, dear friends and students, let's discuss what is IALA system. IALA stands for the International Association of Marine Aids to Navigation and Lighthouse Authorities, and it was previously referred to as International Association of Lighthouse Authorities. IALA is primarily known for the IALA Maritime Voyage Systems or Sea Mark Systems that are used in the pilotage of vessels at sea. These are made up of five buoy types cardinal, lateral, isolated danger, special and safe water marks. Lateral marks indicate the edges of a channel. Cardinal marks indicate the direction of safe water at a dangerous spot. Safe water marks indicate the deep water and open end of a channel. What is the main purpose of IALA system? This marking scheme is designed to enable mariners to identify a buoy if the light is extinguished and, or the top mark is missing. The IALA divided the world into two regions. Region A, Europe, Africa and Asia, and Region B, North America, Japan, Korea, and the Philippines. In Region A, when proceeding in the upstream direction, starboard aids are green. In Region B, they are red, hence the saying, for when we are proceeding in the upstream direction, we are returning, and starboard aids, which are red, are kept to starboard. The rule will only work in very specific situations as you see here. Entering a harbor, or proceeding upstream in a river. These examples are from region B, so starboard aids are red and kept to starboard when proceeding upstream. The only way to know for sure which side of a navigational aid to be on is to look at a chart. It's obvious by looking at the chart that the deeper water is to the west of the starboard day beacons. Let's move on to the navigational aids system and what the various aids look like. I'll begin by breaking down the individual aids, and then we'll put it together with a couple of short animations showing the path of a boat through the various aids. Let's start with lateral aids, so named as they are usually kept to port or starboard. In Region A, starboard aids, which are aids that are kept to starboard when proceeding in the upstream direction, are green. If lit, the light is green, their shape or top marks are conical, and they are odd numbered. Port aids are red. If lit, the light is red. Their shape and top marks are flat, and they are even numbered. In region B, starboard aids are red. If lit, the light is red. Their shape and top marks are also conical, but they are numbered evenly. Port aids are green. If lit, the light is green. Their shape and top marks are flat, and they are odd numbered. This is a bifurcation buoy from region B. They are used to indicate two channels, one primary and one secondary. In this case, the dominant color and shape characteristics are starboard, so you would keep this buoy to your starboard side when choosing the primary channel. There is some green on it, indicating a secondary channel. So, if the secondary channel was desired, this buoy would be treated as a port aid and kept to port when proceeding in the upstream direction. By the way, the largest buoy in the center of this screen is called a pillar buoy. These large buoys sometimes carry bells, in which case they are named bell buoys. The one on the left is a cone, sometimes called a nun, and the one on the right is called a spar buoy. These are port bifurcation buoys, and in this case, if you were to choose the primary channel, you would treat this buoy as a port aid and keep it to your port side when proceeding upstream. What determines a primary and secondary channel is usually how navigable the channel is. The wider, deeper channel will be the primary, with some vessels being able to navigate the secondary. It is the mariner's responsibility to confirm that the secondary channel is navigable. These are called day beacons as they are usually not lit. They are usually used in confined waters. The two in the center are bifurcation day beacons and are used in the same way as bifurcation buoys. This is a fairway buoy and it is kept to port entering and leaving a harbor, somewhat akin to the yellow line on a road. Do not be fooled by the red in this buoy. It is not a starboard aid. The top mark or shape is a ball and if lit, the light is white. This is an isolated danger buoy. The top marks are two black balls. 
If lit, the light is white and there is safe water all around the buoy. Once again, closely consult the chart to identify what the isolated danger is and how far it radiates from the buoy. Next, we'll talk about the cardinal buoys. These buoys use the cardinal points of the compass to indicate the safe water direction. The buoys are identified by their top marks as well as where the black is found on the buoy. The north cardinal buoy has two cones pointing up and black is at the top of the buoy. North is at the top of a chart, so the cones pointing up serve as a memory aid. Safe water is to the north of a north cardinal buoy. More on this when we get to the animations. The south cardinal buoy has cones that point down and black is found at the bottom of the buoy. Once again, south points to the bottom of a nautical chart. Safe water is found to the south of a south cardinal buoy. The west cardinal buoy's top marks point to each other, creating an hourglass. So think of the west cardinal buoy having a small waist. Black is found in the center of the buoy with yellow at the ends. Finally, the East Cardinal Boy has cones that point away from each other and black is found at the ends of the boy with yellow in the middle. The I'm going to wrap up this video with two short animations following the path of a boat in Region A and Region B, both upstream and downstream. Here we see the boat with the fairway buoy to port. Since starboard aids are green in Region A, the boat leaves the green boys to starboard. And here you see the cardinal boys with safe water in each of the four cardinal directions, north being at the top of the chart. Conversely, when out to sea in the downstream direction, the green starboard aids are kept to port. Note that the fairway boy is once again kept to port. In Region B, it is just the opposite, with starboard aids being red. With the fairway buoy kept to port, the boat proceeds up the channel, keeping the red starboard aids to starboard. When heading out to sea, or the downstream, the red starboard aids are kept to port. In this animation from Region B, we see that the boat chooses the left-hand channel as indicated by the buoy to be the wider, deeper, more easily navigated channel. Once committed to the left-hand channel, any upcoming aids are treated in the usual fashion, in this case, keeping the red starboard aids to starboard. Here we also see the isolated danger buoy with safe water all around it. The narrower, less navigable secondary channel is on the right, and if this channel were chosen, then the bifurcation buoy would be treated as a port aid and kept to port. The last group we're going to talk about are the special buoys. Most of the special buoys have two orange bands on either side of a geometrical shape. The various shapes identify the buoy's purpose. The hazard buoy uses a diamond shape much like commercial vehicles use diamond placards to identify hazardous cargoes. Or think of the double black diamond on the ski hill. The keep out boy has a diamond with a cross. Think of bars in a window to keep out burglars. The control boy has a circle shape and usually denotes a speed limit. Think of a number, the number zero. And finally, the information boy provides information to boaters and uses a square shape. I think of a page having a square shape. A few miscellaneous special buoys include the mooring buoy for mooring large vessels. A plain yellow buoy is a cautionary buoy and you will need to consult your chart for details. The red and white diver's flag indicates divers in the water and a plain white buoy indicates a swimming area. By the way, the red flag with the white diagonal stripe is the most recognized diver's flag but signal flag alpha, denoting the letter A, is the official flag to fly during diving operations. Now, let's look at something a bit different, a navigational range. A navigational range consists of two panels, one taller and further back than the other. Once lined up, 
they trace a path through safe water. This is what a range looks like on a chart, and you can see here how it traces a path through safe water when crossing this shallow sandbar. They are commonly used in river mouths and deltas where the navigable channel is restricted. When approaching a navigational range, steer in the direction of the lower panel to line them up. Since its establishment, IALA has developed several important concepts and systems, such as the IALA Maritime Voyage System, IALA MBS, Differential GPS System, DGPS, Automatic Identification System, IS, VHF Data Exchange System, VDES, Development of Vessel Traffic Services, VTS. Until 1980, there were a staggering 30 systems of voyage in use around the world. IALA is responsible for ensuring navigation aids are recognized globally and reliable in all conditions. A good understanding of voyage is essential when heading out to sea to ensure mariners can navigate channels to safe water.